Hi, let us begin to look into the course and understand subsistence marketplaces. First of all, why are we focusing on subsistence marketplaces? Let me make a broad generalization. If you are in North America or Europe, you're familiar with advanced economies. If you're in China, India, Brazil, and so on, you're very familiar with emerging markets. There are subsistence marketplaces in both types of economies. In emerging markets, many people live in the broad range of low income, and that is what we are also referring to as subsistence marketplaces. It goes all the way from being extremely poor to being at the cusp of low to lower middle income. This is also true in advanced economies. We are focusing on subsistence marketplaces for a number of reasons. And part of it is because that is where you can get a lot of cultural insights as well. What do I mean by low income and poverty? What I mean by that is I've never been poor and I come from the highest social hierarchy in India. The first house I remember was a two bedroom home that we rented in Mumbai, formerly Bombay. Now my father grew up lower middle income, but I've always been either middle or upper middle or upper income. So I am the least qualified in terms of experiencing poverty. As I already mentioned, I come from the highest social hierarchy in India, not the economic, but the social. And what that means is that my great-great-grandfather would have told my great-grandfather to study and so on. And I had the access, I had the opportunity. As my forefathers and foremothers got the best part of the village and got the respect there and so on. So it's a type of privilege that is right in here. If I'm least qualified to have been on this journey now for my 27th year, how do I explain poverty to somebody? Well, the first thing I do is I don't assume everybody in my audience has been lower middle income or higher. There are often people who have experienced poverty themselves, which I have not. The way I try to explain poverty is by explaining a very typical day for me. For example, today I got in my car, I had what I needed to, and I drove over to the studio. Everything works for me on a typical day. My life is filled with certainty. The car worked, my cell phone worked, the studio works. I came here, I parked, I came up, and I have amazing people in the studio who have set everything up for me. And in case something doesn't work, let's say my cell phone, I have other options. I could have gone on my laptop, I could have called the studio on Skype, and so on. So what I described to you is a life that is largely filled with certainties.